Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of uh, Poetry Analysis. Today we are going to talk about William Cooper's poem, The Snail. Uh, let us first have a quick reading of the text, The Snail by William Cooper, 1731 to 1800, uh, a pre-romantic. The Snail, William Cooper. To grass or leaf or fruit or wall, the snail sticks close, nor fears to fall. As if it grew there, house and all. Within that house, secure he hides, when danger imminent retires, of storm or other harm besides of weather. Give but his arms the slightest touch. His self-collecting power is such, he shrinks into his house with much displeasure. Wherever he dwells, he dwells alone, except himself has shackles none, well satisfied to be his own home treasure. Thus hermit-like his life he leads, no partner of his banquet needs. And if he meets one, only feeds the pastor, who seeks, seeks him, must be worse than blind. He and his house are so combined, if finding it, he fails to find its master. Once again, to grass or leaf or fruit or wall, the snail sticks close, nor cares to fall. As if he grew there, house and all together. Within that house, secure he hides, where a danger imminent retires, of storm or other harm besides of weather, give but his horns the slightest touch. His self-collecting power is such, he shrinks into his house with much displeasure. Wherever he dwells, he dwells alone, except himself has chattels none, well satisfied to be his own old treasure. Thus, hermit like his life he leads. No partner, no partner of his banquet needs, and if he meets one, only fix the pastor who seeks him must be worse than blind. He and his house are so combined. If finding it, he fails to find his master. So this is a poem, the same, by William Cooper. Uh, before uh, going deep into the poem, let us have, uh, have a background of the text and also some few words uh, uh, of, uh, about William Cooper. William Cooper was born in 1731, as you see, the date here. He was born in 1731 in, uh, in England. Um, he was a pre-romantic poet. Um, he is important in the history of English literature for, different re for, for several reasons. His first poem, The Tarts, which was published in uh, his first poem, The Tarts, which was published in 1730, uh, 1785. It's a long magic poem in blank verse. You may say that the, 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 the long magic poem, The Tarts, is a trendsetter because it was the first poem towards the end of the 19th century, which was written in blank verse. And more than that, the poem gives us a fine picture of the countryside of England and uh, descriptions, fine description of everyday life of common uh, of people there. So the task is a, a new trend setter because it suggests uh, a kind of a change uh, from change in the movement from new classic to uh, to, 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 to romantic tradition. 
before uh, writing the poem The Task, um, he also wrote John Gilpin. William Cooper also wrote John Gilpin, uh, which is a comic ballad and it was published in 1782. Uh, John Gilpin is full of uh, pride and uh, sprightly humor. It tells about the story of John Gilpin, who, who is a person who, despite the fact that he does not know how to ride a horse, he rides a horse on his wedding day, uh, but he fails to stop his horse. It's a comic ballad, and uh, John Gilpin, um, this comic ballad is very much favorite with the people preparing anthologies for children. You might have read this uh, in your childhood. John Gilpin, the famous comic, comic ballad. William Cooper is best known as a hymn writer, as a hymn writer, and uh, he's also uh, remembered today for his uh, best known hymns. Uh, the Christian people, the faithful believer, uh, uh, read these hymns with, uh, with all their heart. So William Cooper is uh, best known today and uh, at that time also as a hymn writer, he's a poet, he's a poet, he's a hymn writer, he's also a fine essayist and also a letter writer. His personal essays, his letter written to, uh, to his friends displays his fine sensibility as a writer. He was a great prose, prose writer. Uh, uh, William Cooper, um, uh, in his childhood, uh, had a very shy and um, timid disposition, timid temperament. Um, at the age of six, at the age of six, he lost his mother. Perhaps this, his loss, his grief. Uh, after having lost his mother, uh, was a very tra traumatic experience, and which will, uh, will be, which will stay with him uh, throughout his life. It, uh, it seems from the accounts of of, of, of uh, different writings uh, of uh, of Cooper's biographers that William Cooper was not favorite with his father. After his mother's death, uh, Cooper's father. A rector, the rector in Buckingham Street, did not stay at home uh, for a long time. He staying at home uh, for his absence from home for a long time uh, was not clear to the biographers. Perhaps because um, of his absence, William Cooper was far more pushed into melancholy, melancholia. William Cooper fell in love with his cousin Theodora. But this love affair, uh, and they were actually uh, Theodora and uh, Cooper um, agreed to marry, but this uh, marriage was prevented, thwarted by their parents. This uh, accounted, this also uh, um, was a cause of Cooper's uh, melancholia, his um, insanity. He was uh, sent to an asylum for recuperation from his insanity. So, Cooper has a very um, tumultuous uh, turmoil, inner turmoil. As a person who was, was timid and shy, he was not capable of uh, tackling people in a difficult situation. But he has a very kind and sympathetic heart. Um, his sympathy for the underdog, the, the people who is in an uh, inferior position, uh, finds expression in different poems. For example, for instance, his poem on epitaph on hair, we find his fine uh, uh, sympathy for hair, which is his pet creature. In this poem also, the snail, we find, uh, we find his love and sympathy for the kind of life the snail leads. It's a fine description, realistic description of the snail uh, living in a garden. So let us have a quick reading of the fast and the fast uh, and try to understand the, the first idea. To grass or leaf or fruit or wall, the snail sticks close, nor fears to fall, as if he grew there, house and all, together. 
So, the snail as a creature clings very tightly, closely, attaches very closely to such objects like grass, leaf, fruit or what. William Cooper here is talking about uh, the garden snail and it clings so closely that he has no chance of falling off from the object. And it seems that he, he grew there. He grew there. It means that uh, the wall or the fruit or the leaf is part of the snail. They grew there together. House and all. House, house means here snail and all. So the snail and its house are inseparable and the object it clings to are inseparable. So there is no chance, absolutely no chance of his falling down from, from this object. So the first one describes uh, the snail's confidence as a creature um, and uh, the place he had, had in moves uh, and um, the kind of fearlessness he has while moving over the objects like uh, the grass, leaf, or fruit, or what. So this is all about the first standard. Huh? It is uh, the, not, not the second standard. Huh? Within that house, secure he hides, while in danger and imminent, betides, of storm or other harm besides, of weather. Within that house, within that house means within that cell, the hard property, which is his house, secure in a safe position, in safety, he hides. He takes shelter. He hides. The snail hides. When danger imminent, when impending danger, imminent means impending. Uh, that is likely to happen soon. Impending means uh, imminent means impending. A danger that is likely to happen soon. Uh, Betise means happens. Of storm or other harm besides of weather. So. Whenever there is any danger in the form of storm or other harms like uh, the, like rain or showers or hailstorm, uh, the snail hides, shrinks, retracts, retreats into his cell, into his house quite safely. So, as a creature, he feels safe in his house and he uh, withstands any kind of danger by withdrawing himself in his house, which is the cell is hard covering of the snail. I will explain uh, different words, the, the meaning of the different words uh, differently after reading the text, after closing the text, after uh, discussing the text. <laughs> Give by his horns the slightest touch. Give by his horns and uh, before uh, uh, entering, before uh, uh, starting discussion about uh, the third standard, I would like to read a few lines. I would like to read a few lines uh, from another poem of William Cooper. William Cooper, where you will have reference. You will have reference to similar kind of uh, danger in the form of storm uh, in the poem. Epitaph on it here, epitaph on it here. And this poem has been written for you uh, over there. His frisking over there. Epitaph on it here. His frisking was at evening hours, for then he lost his fear. But most before approaching showers or when a storm drew near. <clears throat> epitaph on it here. Uh, the poet is writing um, about his pet hare um, who has died a few days ago. Uh, he, was, he was very much favorite with the, uh, this hare was, his pet was very much favorite with the poet. Uh, he is talking about the hare here. His frisking, referring to the hare's frisking, his uh, enjoyment, his um, playing was at evening hours. So the hare enjoys the most in the evening. For then he lost his fear, because at that time he has no fear. But most before approaching showers, or when a storm drew near. He lost fear, but most before approaching showers, and when a storm drew near. 
So when a storm, you know, storm drew near, approaches, um, comes to him, or showers, there is rain, the fear is very much, uh, the hair is very much terrified, like that of the snake in this poem. The snake also becomes scared, the snake also becomes scared and terrified uh, when there is any uh, impending kind of uh, storm or other harms like showers, rain or hailstorms. So this is all about the second stanza. The third stanza, uh, look at the third stanza, give but his horns, the snails, uh, of course, here refers to, his, uh, refers to the snail, give but his horns, horns the, the antenna, the, the, the tentacles, the, the slightest touch, his self-collecting power is such. Uh, if anyone, if anyone touches lightly, even very lightly, uh, the horns, the antenna of the snail, uh, his self-collecting power is such, his power to withdraw, withdraw himself from uh, his surrounding, his self-collecting power is such, his power to control his emotion is such that he swings into his house, he re retracts, he retracts and tears into his house, into his cell with much displeasure, with much annoyance. So the snail resents any kind of uh, intrusion, uh, public intrusion, intrusion from outside uh, into his private life, right? Uh, he does not allow anybody, he does not allow anybody to disrupt, to disturb his tranquility, his self-composure, his quietness, uh, his life of solitariness. So the snail here presented, here is presented as a creature of extra sensibility, extra sensibility, he resents any kind of intrusion uh, from outside. Uh, this kind of intrusion is mm, resented by him by uh, withdrawing, withdraw, withdrawing himself into the heart covering to the cell, which is his house. So, in this stanza, we find self as a creature of extra sensibility, right? Critics have found, found similarity uh, uh, of snail as a creature of extra sensibility with that of William Cooper as a poet of sensibility, as a poet who is very much timid, who is very much shy, who has a very shy temperament and disposition. So, if one touches the tentacle of, uh, of snail, he withdraws, his self-collecting power is such, his withdrawing power is such, his uh, self-controlling power is such, that he shrinks, he reduces his size, uh, decreases size, um, and so that he can retract, retreat into his house, into his cell, with much displeasure, with much annoyance. This is all about the third standard. Snail as a creature of extra sensibility. Wherever he dwells, he dwells alone. Wherever he dwells, dwells means resides uh, or lives, he dwells alone. Wherever the snail lives, he lives alone. He lives a life of solitude. He is a loner, he is a recluse. He is a recluse from society. He does not. The snail does not like any companion. He lives away from society. He lives a life of solitude. He lives a life of loneliness. He lives a life of solitariness. He lives a life of recluse. Except himself has chattel now. Chattel now. Chattel means, chattel means a, a personal belonging or movable position. So, the snail has no personal positions, no personal belongings, no uh, movable positions, except himself, uh, uh, except he, except his body, he has no personal belongings, uh, no uh, movable positions. Well satisfied to be his own whole treasure, well satisfied, well contented to be his own holder, to be his own world. So, the snail is very much contented with himself, he does not need any outside help, he is contented to be his own holder, to be his own 
uh, uh, whole world. So he is self, uh, self sufficient as a creature. Self sufficient as a creature. And he is contented with himself. He is happy with himself. Right? Thus, happy life, he is like he leads no partner of his banquet needs. And if he makes one, only fits the faster. So this snail, the kind of life the snail leads, is like that of a hermit. Uh, a hermit is a person who, especially for religious reasons, withdraws himself from society and lives a life of loneliness, lives a life of solitariness uh, to pursue his own goal, uh, goal religious um, aim. So like a hermit, the snail withdraws uh, himself from the society uh, and um, there is no partner, there is no pain of him and uh, whenever he feeds whenever he feeds if he meets another snail he feeds faster right he uh, takes food with much speed who seeks him must be worse than blind and his house are so combined in finding him, he finds, he tells to find his master. Uh, to find the snail with his master, uh, if one tries to find the snail, it is futile to find the snail and its uh, and the creature without creature within. It's futile to find both uh, the house and the heart covering and the, and the inner creature within. Because the house and the inner creature is inseparable, right? Because the snail conceals itself, or the snail as a creature conceals itself within its house, right? So this is all of the, uh, the fourth and fifth stanza. If you look at uh, the structure uh, of the poem, you will see that each stanza comprises of four lines. And the fourth line, this fourth line is, uh, is, a very, uh, is a very short line, right? Almost one word standard. So you will have uh, quadrants one, quadrant, first standard comprises of one quadrant, four lines, second standard also comprises of uh, four lines, right? Quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Quadrant 5 and quadrant 6. If you look at the rhyme pattern and scheme here, you see that first line rhymes with this second and the second line rhymes with third. So A, A, A. Now together, this is another rhyme pattern. B together, then weather, B, then displeasure. B, then treasure B, then faster B, then master. This is called indented rhyme scheme. Indented, right? Um, and if you look at the second stanza, you see that heights, betides, besides. Similar to that of the first three lines. Heights, betides, besides. C, C, C. Then touch, such, much. D, D, D. Then you will have alone, non, own, e, e, e. Then you will have leads, needs, feeds. Okay, f, f, f. And then you will have blind, combined, fine, g, g, g. And uh, if you look at this tangent pattern here, tangent pattern here, you see that uh, this this uh, fourth line is a bit, is very small. Uh, it almost looks like the coil the tentacle antenna of the snail right so it's a very uh, it's a presentation of the presentation of the image of the snail the first stanza looks like the structure of the first stanza visually looks like a snail recoiling itself within its cover so it's, it, it, this fourth line is like looks like a tentacle antenna of the snail right this stanza Visually represents the picture of a snail recoiling itself within itself. So it's a beautiful 
uh, uh, arrangement of the lines uh, that has been done by Cooper. Of course, Cooper is not directly uh, directly uh, didactic here, as uh, in many of his poems, uh, he is uh, giving a very realistic description of Snell. His uh, his habit, uh, his habitat, uh, his nature, and uh, his self confidence, self sufficiency, self contentment, and uh, self composure. All these qualities are depicted by Cooper, and critics have found similarities of the kind of life that Snell, hermit like life that Snell leads, and the kind of life that Cooper, as a poet, led. We know that Cooper was a very uh, shy and of a timid disposition. He, uh, he would uh, like to avoid public, hmm? and um, he would remain contained within himself, uh, pursuing his own literary career as a person. He has a very um, extra sensibility as a snail. Uh, he has a very human heart, even a very sympathetic heart. That's why um, an, an insignificant creature like snail finds its place uh, in his writing. So the poem is very much romantic in the sense that uh, Cooper gives a very subject, uh, I mean, uh, very um, uh, gives voice, uh, poetic voice, gives um, voice to uh, gives gives a place, gives important to a creature like to, to such a uh, such a so-called uh, apparently signification like sense. So the poem is romantic in that sense, in the treatment of the subject, like um, you know, the slave. Uh, uh, now I would like to draw your attention to some of the words, different words that have been used in the text. Uh, look at this blackboard and you find all the meanings here, right? Look at the blackboard here. <coughs> Imminent means impending that is likely to happen. Impending that is likely to happen soon. Uh, likely to happen soon, right? Betides, especially in poem, happens. Happens something that especially especially bad things happens. Self collecting, self collecting here means withdrawing oneself from world surrounding, from one surrounding, withdrawing oneself from one surrounding, retracting, retreating. And next way, another name is self collect controlling power of emotion. Self -collect controlling power of emotion. Right? Shrinks means contracts. Sortens, contracts or sorten. Chattels, usually, uh, usually in plural form, movable positions, movable positions, personal belongings. Horns, antenna, soon, dwells, resides or lives. So, uh, let us have a quick uh, kind of a Recap of the text and uh, from the William Cooper as a poet. William Cooper, as I've already said, um, most of the literary historians uh, assign Cooper as uh, to the to the to the rank of pre romantic uh, because uh, in his uh, poetry, especially in his uh, long narrative poem, the Tux, we have uh, for, for the first time in his uh, in his in his poem. Cooper is writing in blank verse, uh, which is unlike uh, uh, iambic pentameter, as opposed to the Hewitt couplet in the prevailing age, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the age preceding uh, William Cooper. Um, uh, 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 the great giants like, uh, great writers like Alexander Pope and John Dryden was writing in Hewitt couplet, and that was the passion of uh, uh, writing in the neoclassic age. And William Cooper, uh, uh, sets a new trend by composing his uh, poem, The Tax, in blank verse. This is a trend center which we will see that this blank verse will be taken off by uh, the great poets, romantic poets like uh, Coleridge, um, uh, um, uh, Wordsworth, etc. And uh, in this poem, especially, Cooper gives a very fine and familiar description of the countryside and uh, everyday realities of England. So Cooper is romantic. Uh, his achievement as a poet is 
very much good, uh, very, uh, very great, uh, um, uh, he was assured, despite the fact that uh, he was placed between two literary giants uh, like Alexander Pope, who used the conventions of the neoclassicists uh, to perfection, and William Wordsworth, who actually perfected the kind of train that uh, Cooper showed in his poetry. So, uh, this is, uh, uh, I would like to remind another poem, uh, uh, the, the line, the, the poem begins, I'm the monarch of all I serve him, right? Uh, here, Ali Nasirka is uh, talking about, right? And a very famous poem of Cooper is on the receipt of my father's, of my mother's picture, here we find Cooper's uh, recollection of his mother, whom he lost, whom he lost at the uh, age of six. And uh, after receiving the letters, uh, after receiving his mother's pictures, Cooper um, shows uh, his um, his um, love for her mother, for her mother. And in this, in this poem, he says that every day I was expecting my mother to return, but his expectation was beguiled. Right, because Cooper's perhaps need his mother, need, needed his mother most because his father, after his mother's death, left his electorate. There's no one to replace uh, the, the, the love and care of his mother's feelings. So, Cooper here is very much, uh, uh, very much, um, um, I mean, he, uh, sad here. Uh, his feeling is sad, uh, and his now uh, is the grief that is swelling within himself finds expression uh, uh, in the in the fine poem uh, uh, on the seat to my mother's uh, picture. Another another comic ballad I I have, I have referred to John Gilpin as a comic ballad, uh, which was very much which became very much popular at that time in 1782, and uh, Cooper. As a hymn writer, he was mm, mm, he's best known today. Even uh, today, as a hymn writer, uh, his only hymns is very much famous. It was written in 1775. Uh, the another that Cooper wrote was the Nightingale and the Glowworm, where here Cooper is suggesting that uh, in this world, in this universe, every creature is important, whether it is big or small. It is important. The night angle and the glow. Glow is important, and also the night angle is important. An ugly creature is important, and also a beautiful creature is important. A big creature is important, and also a, 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 a small creature is important. And Cooper uh, uh, wrote another poem uh, which begins with the lines God made the country and man made the town. Right? So here you see Cooper's preference for the countryside and um, the kind of people, the kind of life that the country people lives. It's, it is the, 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 the life at, uh, in country, at country, in, in country is uncorrupting as opposed to the life in the city. Cooper's poems uh, it's, uh, was published in 1782. It's, uh, they are didactic, basically. So this is uh, uh, all about Cooper, uh, but uh, last of all, I'd like to give a Bengali translation of the text uh, William Cooper's poem in this name. To grass or leaf or fruit or word, ghasete patai, atoba phale, atoba dewale, the same sticks close. The snail sticks close. Samuk. Nibi have a arte take. Nibi have a arte take. Nor fears to fall. Hoy, polar hoy, paina. Nor fears to fall. Puri jawar hoy se, paina. As if he grew there, Janus Munahai, say, say, can you do me a uh, House and all. Bari house almost every day. Janus Munahai, they ghas, pata, hall, and all. They are. A glow, uh, a snail by a glow, a samukri at a witch at the also. 
সামুক এবং তার সামুকের বাড়ি এটা হচ্ছে অবিচ্ছেদ অংশ খালি ঘাসে পাতায় অথবা ফলে অথবা দেওয়ালে একটা স্নেল স্নেলটি সামুকটি খুব বিভিন্নভাবে আঁকতে থাকে পরার ভয় সে পায় না যেন মনে হয় সেখানে সেই ঝোল সেখানে সে বের উঠছে একত্রে যেন মনে হয় এই পাতা ঘাস ফল এবং দেওয়াল সামগ্রী একটা অংশ দ্বিতীয় স্ট্যান্ডার্ড উইদ ইন দ্যাট হাউস ওই বাড়ির ভেতরে মানে সামুকের খোলে খোলসের ভেতরে সিকিওর নিরাপদে হি হাইস লুকিয়ে পড়ে নিরাপদে সে লুকিয়ে পড়ে কখন লুকিয়ে পড়ে হোয়েন ডেঞ্জার যখন বিপদ ইমিনেন্ট মানে হচ্ছে আসন্ন বিপদ ইমিনেন্ট ডেঞ্জার আসন্ন বিপদ বিটাইস ঘনি আসে হ্যাপেন্স যখন আসন্ন বিপদ ঘনি আসে যখন আসন্ন বিপদ ঘনি আসে স্নেল তার সামগ্রী লুকিয়ে পড়ে নিরাপদে লুকিয়ে পড়ে কিসের বিপদ অষ্টম ঝড়ের বিপদ অথবা অন্যান্য বিপদ অন্যান্য বিপদ লুকিয়ে পড়ে তার বাড়ি কারণ বাড়ি সে সবসময় বহন করছে তো এরকম বিপদের উল্লেখ আমরা উইলিয়াম কুপারের অন্য একটা কবিতা যে কবিতার মধ্যে আমরা পাই কবিতার নাম হচ্ছে এপিটা ফনেজিয়ার এপিটা ফনেজিয়ার এই কবিতা তিনি লিখছেন তার প্রিয় একটি খরগোসের মৃত্যু যে কবিতার কবিতা যেখানে লিখিত হচ্ছে সেখানে তিনি বলছেন একটা জায়গায় বলছেন দেখো এখানে এটা দেখো এখানে দেখো এপিটা ফনেজিয়ার হিস ফিস্কিং ওয়াজ এট ইভিং আওয়ার্স ফর দেন he lost his fear but most before approaching showers or when a storm drew near his face in with tar anondo tar lakhlapi jhapajati se beshi kore thake tar bolte ei khorgoshti sondher shomoy jokhon she tar kono tar kono bhoy thake na kintu she sob sob theke beshi bhoy pay ei khorgoshta kokhon beshi bhoy pay most before approaching showers jokhon bishti e giye ashe বৃষ্টি হয় অল ওয়েন স্টম ড্রু নিয়ার যখন ঝড় এগিয়ে আসে তা ঝড়ের সময় বা বৃষ্টির সময় খরগোষ্ঠী ভীষণ ভয় পায় বাকি সময় সে কিন্তু সন্ধ্যেবেলায় প্রচণ্ড লাফালাফি ঝাঁপাঝাপি করে সে আনন্দ করে তো এইরকম ঝড়ের রেফারেন্স ঝড় ঝড়ের উল্লেখ ঝড়ের রেফারেন্স আমরা এই স্নেলের মতো দেখতে পাচ্ছি ওই ডেঞ্জার এজে আসন্ন বিপদ ঘনি আছে ঝড়ের বিপদ অথবা অন্যান্য আবহাওয়া বিপদ যেমন সে বৃষ্টি মৃদুতম পর্শ যদি দেওয়া হয় সামুকের সামুকের অ্যান্টেনাকে সামুকের সুরকে যদি মৃদুতম পর্শ দেওয়া হয় হি সেল কালেক্টিং পাওয়ার ইস সাজ তার আত্মসংগ্রহের ক্ষমতা এতটাই আত্মসংগ্রহ ক্ষমতা এতটাই পরিবেশ থেকে গুটি নেওয়ার ক্ষমতা এতটাই যে হি সিংস সে নিজেকে ছোট করে নেয় গুটিয়ে নেয় আকারে গুটি নিয়ে প্রবেশ করে সেই সিংস ইন্টু ইস হাউস তার বাড়ির মধ্যে প্রবেশ করে উইথ মাস্ক ডিসপ্লে যায় যথেষ্ট অ্যানোয়ান্সের সঙ্গে যথেষ্ট বিরক্তি সহকারে সে নিজেকে গুটিয়ে নেয় তো এই স্মেলের এই যে এই মানে সামুকের এই যে বৈশিষ্ট্য বাইরের পরিবেশ থেকে নিজের গুটি নেওয়ার যখনই কোনো রকম ভাবে বাইরে কোনো রকম ভাবে কোনো ইন্ট্রুশন ঘটে বাইরে কোনো রকম হস্তক্ষেপ ঘটে তো এই ধরনের যে বৈশিষ্ট্যের সঙ্গে সমালোচকরা উইলিয়াম কুপারের ব্যক্তিগত তার যে ইন্ডিভিজুয়ালিটি তার যে ব্যক্তিত্বের সঙ্গে তুলনা করেছেন একই রকম তারা তুলনা খুঁজে পেয়েছেন যে উইলিয়াম কুপার আমরা জানি তিনি ব্যক্তিগত জীবনের অত্যন্ত নিরীহ ছিলেন অত্যন্ত লাজুক ছিলেন এবং তিনি কোনো চ্যালেঞ্জিং সিচুয়েশনকে সম্মুখীন হতে পারতেন না যেমন তখন তখন ফর ইনস্ট্যান্স উদাহরণস্বরূপ একবার পাবলিক এক্সাম এক্সামের যখন অ্যাপ্রোচ করছিল তখন এগিয়ে আসছিল 
তখন তিনি তার নার্ভাস ব্রেকডাউন হয়েছিল এবং আমরা জানি যখন তিনি স্কুলে পড়াশোনা করতেন ওয়েস্ট মিস্ট স্কুলে পড়াশোনা করতেন যে সেই সময়ে সেই স্কুলে কয়েকজন সিনিয়র ছাত্র তার বন্ধু সিনিয়র বন্ধু তাকে তার ওপর অত্যাচার চালাতো এবং তিনি এতটাই ভীত ছিলেন এতটাই টিমি ছিলেন যে অত্যাচারী ছেলেগুলি আমাদের দিকে তার পালন করতে সাহস ছিল না তিনি তাদেরকে চিনতে পারতেন তাদের জুতোর ফিতে দেখে সে উপর দিকে তাকাতে পারত তিনি উপর দিকে তাকাতে পারতেন ইউ আর সো থিমি ইউ আর সো সাই অ্যাজ এ স্টুডেন্ট তো সেরকম সাইনেস সেরকম টিমিনেস আমরা এই সামগ্রীর মধ্যে দেখতে পাচ্ছি বিচ্ছিন্ন থাকতে নীরবে থাকতে শান্তির পরিবেশে থাকতে নিজে নিজের সম্পদ নিজে নিজের সম্পদে যথেষ্ট সে সন্তুষ্ট কাজে এখানে আমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছি যে শামুকের আত্মসন্তুষ্টির কথা বলা হচ্ছে সে একটা স্বয়ং স্বনির্ভর স্বয়ং সম্পূর্ণ ব্যক্তি জীব যে নিজেই নিজেকে নিয়ে সন্তুষ্ট সন্ন্যাসীর মতো হিজ লাইফ ইলিজ তার জীবনকে সে যাপন করে নিজের নিজ খাবারের জন্য তার কোন পার্টনার লাগে না তার কোন সাথী লাগে না সে সাথীকে ভালোবাসে যে সামুকে খুঁজতে চায় সে অন্ধ অন্ধ থেকে আরো কিছু হি অ্যান্ড ইজ হাউস আর সো কমাই সে সামুক এবং তার বাড়ি এতটাই সংযুক্ত বলছেন যে হয়তো এই কবিতাটি the poem itself the poem itself uh, is the snail right and uh, and uh, mm. already bolchi na ekhane kobita ta hocche bari ekhane kobita ta hocche bari samuk holen kobi jini sarboda uposthit thaken তার মূল্যবান কাব্যে দ্বিতীয় ব্যাখ্যা যেটা অনেক সময় দিয়ে থাকেন এখানে সামুক হল প্রতীকি সন্ন্যাসী এখানে সামুক হল প্রতীকি সন্ন্যাসী সন্ন্যাসী চিন্তাবিদ যিনি নিজেকে সরিয়ে রাখেন জগৎ থেকে যতক্ষণ না তিনি তার কাজের সঙ্গে একাত্ম হন তাহলে কোনো কোনো সমালোচক বলেন এখানে সামুক হল প্রতীকি সন্ন্যাসী চিন্তাবিদ যিনি নিজেকে সরিয়ে রাখেন জগৎ থেকে যতক্ষণ না তিনি তার কাজের সঙ্গে একাত্ম হন আবার কেউ কেউ বলেন সামুক হল কবি কুকরের প্রতীক যিনি পাবলিক লাইফে পাবলিক লাইফে অস্বস্তি বোধ করেন এবং যিনি মানসিক রোগীদের চিকিৎসালয়ের দেওয়ালে এবং যিনি মানসিক রোগীদের চিকিৎসালয়ের দেওয়ালে প্রস্তুতিত ফুলের মতো একাতিত্ব বোধ করেন একাতি বোধ করেন আর একটি কথা যদি আমরা স্ট্যান্ডার অ্যারেঞ্জমেন্ট যা স্ট্যান্ডার সঙ্গে দেখি তাহলে এই স্ট্যান্ডারগুলিকে দেখতে ছোট 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 সামুকের মতো এবং এই ছোট্ট চতুর্থ লাইনটি এটা সামুকের আইনটে না যেটি গুটিয়ে থাকে যেটা চতুর্থ লাইনটি যেমন সামুকের ছোট্ট সুরের মতো 
गोटानो छोटो सामुके मतो छोटो सामुके सामुके एंटेनर मतो सूर्य मतो गोटानो तब उत्तर के स्टैंड जा देखते सामुके मतो तब वो ये छोटो लाइन जी छोटो छोटो तो लाइन जी सामुके सूर्य मतो जिधर जानो गोटानो आ चें सामुके खोल से मुद्दे आ अलग टिप आता ताहले ऊपर हमारे के एको भी ताई दिए चें निखुद चित्रमाय स्थिर जीवन निखुद चित्रमाय स्थिर जीवन ऊपर हमारे के दिए चें कभी तो मुद्दे निखुद चित्रमाय स्थिर जीवन इन्हें तो बोलते कले ये टा है ऊपर हमारे ऊपर किस साज फार्फेट इमेजिस्टिक स्टील पिक्चर ऊपर हमारे के दिए चें फार्फेट ऊपर ऊपर किस साज फार्फेट इमेजिस्टिक स्टील पिक्चर ऊपर हमारे के इन्हें दिए चें निखुद चित्रमाय स्थिर जीवन सो टुडे आई विल लीव देयर this is all about the snail and Cooper as a poet and his place in the history of English literature. We have tried to analyze and assess and uh, explicate the poem the snail as far as po it is possible for me. Um, hope you like the video and if you like the videos, please share, comment and subscribe. And if you do that, I will feel inspired to upload another video on another poem. Stay blessed. Goodbye.